I may not be in Canada, nor am I Canadian, but today we're going to pretend like I am and learn about five common maple species so that hopefully one day you can make your own maple syrup. This is a sugar maple, and sugar maples can live to be about 200 to 400 years old, which is really old. They can also grow to be about 15 to 30 meters tall, and they are commonly used in the production of maple syrup because of the high concentration of sugar within their sap. Now, their wood is also used for making gun stocks, flooring, and furniture. Now, you can typically find a sugar maple in well-drained soils. So, if you look inside of upland or bottomland forests, um, if you also look in ravines or on slopes, then you can find yourself a nice sugar maple. Now, the bark of a sugar maple will be a grayish-brown color, and it'll be smooth when it's young. However, as the sugar maple matures, you'll see that it forms vertical plates that sort of curl outwards. You can sort of see right here that uh, we have some plates that are curling outward. This is a box elder, and box elders are probably the easiest of our five maples to identify. Now, box elders don't live very long. They only live to be about uh, 60 to 100 years old, and they grow to be about 18 to 25 meters tall, so they don't grow very big. Now, Box elders can be found in dry upland areas, but they're more commonly found in moist areas, such as on floodplains or along streams. Now, the bark is a grayish brown to green bark when it's young, but as the tree matures, um, the bark will just be like a grayish brown, and it'll form narrow ridges um, that run in parallel to one another. However, it'll occasionally form a diamond. Uh, shaped furrow within those parallel ridges. So you gotta watch out for that. This is a Norway maple, and Norway maples can live to be about 125 years old, and they can grow to be about 18 to 30 meters tall. Now, Norway maples were first introduced into North America from Europe in 1756 as popular street trees with a beautiful fall foliage that was tolerant to dust and pollution. However, they commonly escape into natural habitats, However, uh, these Norway maples are not very tolerant to drought or flooding, so they're typically found in uh, moist, well-drained areas such as moist woodlands or along the sides of roads. Now, the bark of a Norway maple starts out like a brownish gray and smooth, but as it matures, it will create narrow ridges that form diamond-shaped furrows. This is a red maple, and red maples can live to be about 75 to 150 years old, and they can grow to be about 12 to 30 meters tall. Now, red maples are typically used for landscaping due to their vibrant red fall foliage, their fast growth, and their wide environmental tolerances. However, their wood is also used in flooring, furniture, as firewood, and as lumber. Now, uh, you can typically find a red maple in really dry areas, such as upland forests, or in really wet areas, such as bottomland forests. You can also find them on slopes or along streams, so you can really find them generally anywhere. Now, the bark of a red maple is a light gray or just generally grayish color when it's young, and it'll be smooth. And then it'll get a little bit darker when it matures, and it'll form these vertical cracks that sort of separate into plates or scales, just kind of like how this one is. This is a silver maple, and silver maples can live to be about 125 years old, and they can grow to be about 23 to 30 meters tall. Now, they're typically planted as street trees due to their fast growth and their moisture and pollution tolerances. And you can typically find a silver maple in really moist areas, such as bottomland forests, or on floodplains, or on the river or lake margins. Now, the bark of a silver maple is a brownish grayish pink color, and it typically is smooth when it's young, and then when it's older, it forms vertical plates that sort of curl outward. An easy way to tell if you have a maple by the twig will be to look for the three buds that are clustered at the top. Let's get a closer look at the buds on this sugar maple twig. These buds consist of a large apical bud with two smaller lateral buds on either side. To me, it looks sort of like a trident. Also, they have a continuous circular solid white or pink pink. 
pith, which is that spongy material in the middle of the twig. Their buds will be in an opposite arrangement, and there will also be imbricate, so the scales on the buds will be overlapping one another, sort of like the shingles on a roof. Alright, now we know we have a maple, but now it's time to figure out which one we have. Box elders have twigs that are predominantly green, even through the winter time, although they can be slightly purplish in color, and their buds are pubescent. So that tells me that we're holding a box elder right here, because really the only trees that you'll encounter around here that have a green twig during the winter time will be a box elder or a sassafras. There might be a couple others, but those are going to be the main two. Now, the other four maples are a bit more tricky to figure out, and they take a little bit of sleuthing. They all have brown twigs to some degree, and sometimes they'll be tinted red or gray. However, sugar maples will have very dark brown to black buds, which is very different from the reddish buds of the other three remaining species. Silver maples are almost always found near a body of water or in a bottomland forest or on a floodplain. So if you're in a really dry area, you're probably looking at a red maple or a Norway maple. More often than not, a red maple will have a reddish twig, which will help to distinguish it from a Norway maple, which typically has a brownish twig and buds that are more on the purplish side, whereas red maples usually have reddish buds. But if you aren't sure, snap a twig or a leaf off of the tree, and if the tree starts to leak a white milky sap, then it's a Norway maple, because Norway maple is the only one of these five species that has a white milky sap. Now, what if we're trying to identify a maple while it has its leaves? Most of these maples have opposite palmate leaves, which means that they have multiple lobes radiating from the center of the leaf, resembling a palm of a hand. Basically, what's on the Canadian flag. The silver, sugar, and Norway maples all have simple leaves with five lobes, except the Norway maple can sometimes have seven lobes. Red maples usually have three lobes, but can occasionally have five lobes per leaf. So it is important to check multiple leaves per tree. Silver maple leaves stand out with their jagged toothed margins and their silvery undersides that can help tremendously with identification. Always check those undersides. Box elder is the exception among our maples because it has pinnately compound leaves and they're composed of three to seven leaflets that meet at a central stalk. So they look very different from all of our other maples and they resemble sort of like a feather. Maples produce dense inflorescences of imperfect flowers with a few perfect flowers on each tree. The flowers are green to yellow except for red and silver maples which have red to pink flowers. Silver maples bloom as early as February while others bloom in April or May before their leaves unfold. And they get pollinated by wind and insects. Maples produce double stamaras, otherwise known as helicopters, that start out green and turn brown as they age. Each stamara has a single seed at its base, and the stamara's wings form different angles depending on the species. So red maples form about a 70 degree angle or less, sugar maples form about a 50 degree angle, maybe a little bit more, box alders form about a 60 to 90 degree angle, and silver maples form about a 60 to 100 degree angle, while Norway maples will form about a 180 degree angle. Sometimes the red maple samaras will be a bit more tinted red, like the ones in my photo here, which can be quite helpful when trying to identify your tree. Also, the samaras of silver maple are much larger than the other four species that we're looking at today, so another really good identification uh, characteristic. Anyway, all of these fruits mature between August and October and are wind dispersed. Alrighty, thank you all for watching. I hope that you enjoyed learning how to identify these five common species of maple with me. If you did, be sure to like and subscribe, and I hope to see you all in my next video.